here. He's gonna have to show me this one. It's the uh, right, it's guys. the prequel to Leisure Suit Larry. Here we do it. Let's do a scoop. What's up, everybody? Welcome to IGN Game Scoop, the final Game Scoop of the year, oh. 2016. <laughs> I'm your host, Damon Hatfield. Joining me this week is Justin Davis, scoop. Sam Claiborne. What about the next two weeks of scoops? No, there are no more two weeks of scoops in this year. And joining us for his final appearance on the IGN Game Scoop show is Jared Petty. Sad here scoop. He is, here he is. No, Jared no, no. Lynn Petty. Jared oh. Lynn Petty. We're going to send him out on a high note here. Oh, dear. Uh, yeah, I think, uh, I hope I've put together a great final show for everyone, uh, this week. I thought you were going to let Jared put it together. Nope. <laughs> he doesn't put together the show. No. Da- at, Damon is master so of our So much tension domain. on this, t- in this table. <laughs> oh, <'cause laughs> we, like, we all hate Jared yeah. so much. Obviously, Damon forced him out. You've all, you've all hated me for so long that yeah. the fans have told us about it for, for years now. They've uh, told us <laughs> how we feel. Yep. That's true. It's been no source of endless amusement around the office. How did you, did you see the look they gave each? <laughs> at 24 minutes into the episode, you yep. can tell. Yes, Jared's always been angling to be host of the Game Scoop. That's really what it's all about, is I've been secretly trying to find a way to poison Damon and take his power. <laughs> is this um, pecan bourbon <laughs> poison? <laughs> mm, mm, I've made my play mm. at last. All right, we got to talk about the hottest games of the year. We're going to talk about, of course, Cooking Mama. Ooh, we're going to talk whoa, about... Really? Yeah. We're not really whoa. talking about Cooking Mama. We're going to talk a little bit about Cooking Mama. It's a magician. show. I'm there. We're going to talk about one of the hottest games of 2017, Ukulele. Whoa. Oh. But first... Come back with me. Walk back to the beginning of 2016. Imp- impossible. Let's go all the way back to January 2016. It's time for our year in review to take a look back at all the biggest gaming events of the year. Some of them will be talked about for years to come. Some of them you may have forgotten about. Already. January 2016, the day Pony or the month Pony Island was born. We begin <laughs> totally ignored. <laughs> I like Pony Island. I like it too. Uh, I just haven't played it yet. We begin on January 8th, a prescient news item, uh, when Mark Laidlaw, lead writer of the Half-Life series, retired from Valve before finishing his saga. Yeah, Mm -hmm. I did forget about that. It happened this year. Well, Valve is, you know, Dota 2. They make so much money off that. They make Steam. so much money off Team Fortress and yeah. Steam and uh, and Counter-Strike. You know, games, although Team Fortress has developed a lore and story over time, you know, these are three games that are not exactly known for their... Uh, yeah. Did I say Portal 2 instead of Dota 2? Uh, anyway, Dota uh, 2 is what I meant to say. We had a uh, party with drinking earlier today. Yep. <laughs> and gifts that and of the white elephant variety. Yeah, it was yeah. great. Speaking of which, great. I'm going to enjoy some of this pie hole... Pecan pie whiskey. Oh, Justin <laughs> brought, so everyone wants the booze that people bring, but Justin actually brought a non-booze A-plus gift. How is it? How, how is this this pecan pie whiskey? It's like it's like drinking a piece of pie. I just keep, <laughs> keep hearing Billy Crystal being like, I would be pleased to partake of your pecan pie. Pecan pie. Pecan pie. Uh, yeah, my gift at the White Elephant Gift Exchange was, <laughs> was a, a 12-inch tall wooden ship. Ah, Mom and ship. it was very popular. That one. Yeah. Everyone <laughs> wanted it. Some people it. made fun of me, and I said, you don't even know. That thing's going to go. They're not even going to say. It had a little tiny wooden anchor. So it did have it. a tiny wooden anchor. The, the expression, you've maybe heard of it. Mm. Uh, I coined it. It sells like hotcakes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So uh, this wooden ship was so popular that now the new phrase is. It sells uh, like the wooden it ship. It sells like a wooden <laughs> ship. What, was it a frigate or a cargo uh, fluid? We've actually spent too much time on the ship. We're moving on. on a merchantman? Uh, no, perhaps. On February 8th. Okay, go ahead. Game trailer's closed. Oh, oh mm-hmm. yeah, already. long-running uh, uh, video game destination. One of the best uh, on the internet, but that has a little bit of a happy story yeah, later on. It does later on. Later on. Yeah, we later can talk on. about that. Later. I actually uh, freelanced for Game Trailers one E three many nice. many yeah. years ago. Really, uh, I've been working for. I'd already been working professionally in the business, but only like Game Trailers was the first like big, well-known. Like Did before they have that, writing, it, written stuff. No, uh, okay. my role there was. Um, so they would have one of their talented, good-looking people say, hey, we're outside of the Sony booth here at E3 2006 or whatever it was, and now we're going to go to talk to so-and-so about their games. But those people that were doing those stand-ups didn't necessarily know about video games. Mm. So I was the one asking questions to the developer about their Star Wars game, about whatever game, but they would cut out my questions and just cut to the developer's answers. Yeah. So my job for the week was just to... You can see my Maybe arm. Show you're holding you, the microphone. I think it's E3 2006. Uh, it's my arm. Which would have been many, my first professional in, E3. In many of those uh, shots. So it's like when we zoom in on Damon here in the show. Like when the camera goes in on Damon, you can kind of do the whole like the oh. thing over here. Like or that. you can't even tell that when Damon's in the shot by himself that we're not even in the room. We're not filming this together. These are filmed on yeah. separate days. Just kind of you stick yeah. your hand in here. Just kind of like. Whoop. 
All right, let's move it around. All right, we're moving on. Yeah, All game right. trailers. Uh, it, so it's very sad. Moving, they did... moving on to talk about game trailers. <laughs> yeah, I mean, even besides my involvement with them, like we all love that site, and it's a bummer and, to yeah. see places like that. Go that's away. that's. I mean, I first encountered James Rolfe uh, through game trailer mm-hmm. trailers. Uh, angry video game nerd. Yeah, uh, and uh, that led They're me really down the path name. of happiness. They're long form documentaries, and they were r- really wonderful for many years. Uh, February twenty second was when Pokemon Sun and Moon was officially announced. Wow. Oh goodness! Really in the yeah, end. we want a whole year without Pokemon, a Pokemon series game before that, which is weird. Yeah, and well, we got that one-two punch of Go and Sun and Moon. Yeah, uh, back to back. This is obviously a very big year for Pokemon. On March twenty-eighth, uh, Oculus Rift began shipping to consumers. Yeah, followed a week later by the HTC Vive. Ooh. First to that was a really fun week in the office. We had our demo room here converted into an <coughs> HTC Vive yeah. room because. Yeah. You need space. It has yeah. cameras that you set up around the room. And that was the first time since, you know, the E-Valkyrie generation of games where you're sitting in a cockpit and flying <clears throat> that I was really impressed with VR. Um, I've talked about Lucky's Tale on this with Oculus, but with Vive, nobody's, I never oh, have Vive. to take that home and show people yeah. because it's so hard to set up. But like mm-hmm. when we had it set up in the office, that one studio thing of, yep. of uh, Steam's games, uh, the, hmm. studio, the package of just playing around with their toys is so amazing and just the portal experience alone was like incredible the floor falls out from under you and it's terrifying the room scale VR in Vive is so special and different feeling than what you get in like Oculus yeah the touch uh, controllers are pretty good yeah like Damon you were like kicking and walking around and stuff in the uh, what in uh, uh, Super Hot yeah. yeah like you moved a lot yeah. in that and it tracked you pretty well but the Vive is made for that yeah mm-hmm. Vive made me wish I were rich and powerful in a way few things do mm-hmm. uh, I was like oh I want to have a giant room dedicated to this in my home because it's great on 420 we blazed it up <laughs> and okay. also Microsoft discontinued the <laughs> Xbox 360 you guys blazed it up on 420 <laughs> yeah we, no. were, we published a cool feature that day yeah well, every year <laughs> The same feature we publish every yeah every 420. every year on 420 we send the same feature to the top of IGN and fewer and fewer people get the joke every year mm-hmm. which in turn makes it funnier to me <laughs> when I put it back up yeah what so what happened on that day uh, oh, Microsoft yeah. discontinued point. the Xbox 360 just yep. manufacturing new consoles yeah no make not making the system anymore mm. yeah. I, I I have little doubt that IGN will forget to uh, restrict my access to the content management system after mm. leaving the organization, and I will be able to publish that story again on 420 okay. next year. That's okay. my hope. Sure. Jared, go ahead and schedule it. Just All schedule right, yeah. it now. Before schedule you go. it now? All right. The next 2,000 years. Yeah. On April 29th, Lionhead Studios closed. Oh, yeah. Uh, there was that, that whole sad Molyneux thing. Yeah, yeah. Leaving, That's leaving, Fable's... Uh, leaving, well, leaving the future of Fable in, uh, in jeopardy. And the yeah. there was a Fable game in, in progress. Yes. Is that late? Wait, I forget Fable, which one it is. The, the Fable Carriage Legends. One. It was Legends. Uh, uh, Fable Asynchronous Multiplayer, but yeah. oh, wait, there may oh, be not, microtransactions. Not the Carriage edition. one. That yeah, one came they introduced out, I think. the dog. Yeah, there's a dog. Uh, on May nice 6th, dog. Battlefield 1 was officially confirmed following many leaks. We knew it was going to be a World War 1 game, and we got the, the big uh, reveal trailer, the release date, first details. Yeah. Game. That was a good I, day. I work with, I mean, we all work with, I work very closely with uh, Chloe Rad. Uh, she works on the features team with me, and uh, her favorite things on this earth are first person shooters and World War 1. <laughs> So she was There's a very, you. very happy woman uh, the day that Battlefield 1 was announced. And so excited. She was she, uh, she was pouring over every frame of the trailer to figure out if you were going to be able to dig a trench. Yeah. <laughs> After the <laughs> Xbox One kind of naming woes, and, and just that system had problems launching. Well, I Battle- never thought we'd go back to naming something else one. Now it's a trend. Well, Battlefield 1, what's so funny is that uh, that name was mocked. Like everyone, like it reminds me of the Wii where mm. everyone's like, that name is terrible. It's awful. I can't believe they did this. And then people came around so fast. Yeah. Um, the game, and it helped that the game looked dope as hell uh, at the time. And now when it came out, it turned out it yeah, was dope as hell. Yeah. But like, you know, the more and more we saw of it, it really did win people over and they came around to that naming convention pretty yeah. fast. Of course, Battlefield 1 is one of the big success stories of the year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, on May 10th, Disney shut down Avalanche and then got out right. of the game publishing business. Yep. Yeah. And then was Infinity... Disney Infinity, yeah, they sort of like cut, just canceled Disney so Infinity. Weird, it, it was it was kind of a it, it hurt a little to walk over to the corner. I was at Disneyland not too long ago, and I went over the corner to one of the, of the one of the Disney stores there in the Disneyland park, and there was this like sad Disney Infinity clearance corner, like all by itself over there, yeah, away like from one all Jack the other Sparrow merchandise. And, like a- and I'm just like, oh, you were really cool games. I'm so sad to see you go. Yeah, I mean Disney Infinity. It was the best of all those games. Uh, maybe not better than Lego. It was certainly better than Skylanders. Mm-hmm. And so it's just interesting to see them be the first yeah. one to fall. And they had some big licenses in there, but... Yeah. Giant licenses, you know, really talented, uh, good... Like, you know, it was a real proper video game in a way that Skylanders is more just kind of an adventure for kids. Yeah. Um, it's a shame. 
And that said, go play Lego The Force Awakens right now because it's still available oh, yeah, sure. and it's dope. And does that mean we'll never get a DuckTales 3? I mean, I think DuckTales 3 was probably a foregone conclusion long ago. <laughs> Uh, it was a foregone conclusion that we were not going to okay. go oh, okay. uh, because like, wow. life is like a hurricane uh, here in Duckburg and elsewhere, mm. and uh, that makes getting a Ducktales three very difficult. On true, May, true words. On May eighteenth, well we bought game trailers. A we, a we here at the Imagine Games we, Network. We did. Yep. Yeah. At Internet Gaming News. Internet Gaming News. <laughs> we bought game trailers. Yeah, it was actually a little interesting to see behind the scenes um, how, uh, like, we got these archives of game trailers content on. Um, I wasn't directly involved in the process, so I apologize if I'm misspeaking on one of the details. But I think it was just like these old hard drives. They're so, like, here you go. Here's everything game trailers ever, ma- ever made. And a lot of it had been archived and was already available digitally. But there's a lot of game trailers content that that wasn't. Like, it would have been lost forever if not for these like tapes, these hard drives uh, that I we mean, got. They were just game trailers. We had them too. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so <laughs> it's on, a joke because they yeah, have a lot of original content. Yeah. On that game trailers YouTube channel, uh, we for a long time uh, had someone working, mm-hmm. uh, toiling away, uh, copying that stuff over and making sure that stuff would have a second life on YouTube. Did you YouTube. guys know what? a actual real life robot archives IGN? Yeah. I think I, yeah. Didn't, I didn't know. We that. named him Dendy. Mm-hmm. Dendy. We have a robotic arm yeah. that pulls and that. replaces magnetic uh, backups. Is it here in the office? Yeah. I can't. It can't reveal that. <laughs> why? Wow. Why did we name him Dendy? Uh, well, Dendy is a professional esports player. I don't know why we named oh, the robot Dendy. Dendy is also the name for a Russian clone of the Famicom. Well, there you uh, go. That's that's very popular the in that part world. of the world. So that's that's fascinating. It's good. I'm gonna have. To, I'm gonna enjoy some more. Jared this could have made whiskey. that up. That's one of his only facts. I'm that's unable what, to verify. Here's yeah. uh, uh, trivia. Jared is gonna say uh, five lies <laughs> right. on five this lies scoop. No, no, no. Jared has said five lies on every five <laughs> on every scoop for the last three years. <laughs> They're all made up. There yeah. never was a Mind for Ever Voyaging. Now Infocom never. never produced it. It's not real. Yes. June and is the of course, never existed. June is of course all about E3. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think the big new biggest news out of the Xbox conference was the reveal of the Xbox Scorpio coming yeah. next year. Out of the Sony conference, we got a God of War reboot, new Spider-Man from Insomniac. They announced Crash Bandicoot sort of being revived, and uh, Kojima revealed Death Stranding. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That had Spider-Man to, uh, game. I want to see more of it so bad. Yeah, that's good. And of course, Nintendo gave us our first really good, big, meaty look at yeah. Zelda Breath of the Wild. I really like focusing E3 on that one game for them. I thought yeah. that was really cool. Which was one? The, the, for? for Zelda. Oh, yeah. Like you, that booth yeah. is so cool. They didn't have much of a choice. <laughs> no, that, they didn't have a choice, but it, but they could have switched. Switch. Yeah, sure. Maybe. I don't know. But yeah, the man, it was so fun just having three days of eight hours of Zelda. That, cool that, that, that E3 booth was dope, but I do think my all-time favorite moment uh, working at IGN was being in the uh, E3 room this year in the press room. We're all there together, all of IGN. And when, and when that camera panned around to Norman Reedus' face, yeah. mm. like yeah. just oh, yeah. watching people lose it. Yeah. Uh, that well, because was Because of the Silent Hills. Yeah, because Silent Hills was dead. Mm. We, uh, PT was PT. dead. We, we didn't know that was going to happen. And it cuts around, and there's Norman Reedus, and it clicks, and a hundred people just lose their minds all at once that yeah. love what they do. I mean, it, it, this is a vocation for us. It's a, it's a job, but that love is still there and watching everybody turn into kids at Christmas again. That was beautiful. And so then we got pizza delivered. Yeah, then we got pizza. Yeah. Then we got free pizza. So uh, free pizza. Th- that was the moment for you, not when uh, Ubisoft uh, surprise revealed Steep? I mean, <laughs> Steep was... I, while I was captivated by the announcement of Steep, I definitely think the high point of that conference was was the the beginning where, like, the giraffe and the weird acrobat oh, yeah. are all expressing oh, yeah. their condolences okay, for well, the horrible events of that, that day. Re- that was a really it. strange yeah. moment. I mean, I was glad yeah. that they chose to say something. It was very courageous of them to do so. But but Goodness that was gracious, a little yeah. weird that the, the cast of characters standing there on stage at that particular moment was a little striking. It's also uh, worth noting EA decided to hold its own event outside adjacent to E3 this year, a big public facing event called EA Play, and it went well for them, so I wouldn't be surprised if they do that again next year. Uh, Then on July 6th, Pokemon Go was released. Mm -hmm. The Pocket Mans on your cell phone. So we had Pokemon Go a little bit early, and everybody that was playing it here is like, yeah, it's it's an okay game, but I just don't understand anything in this game. And when it launched, 
uh, we had a couple of like guides ready to go about like just explaining like what it doesn't tell you and stuff like that. Those were the most popular things we did as a site this year. Yeah. Oh, the the statement I don't understand anything about this game is is the mental money in the bank mm -hmm. for guides writing. You're exactly. just like wow, okay, yeah. well great, let's explain it. We, I mean, we can do a public service. What one of my great joys in working here mm -hmm. all these years has been guides writing because here to help. you're actually able to help and it's fun. You feel good about it, and so that was a great opportunity. So our, our wives are teachers, and and one way I always drive. My wife crazy is by saying like I'm a teacher too because I write strategy <laughs> guides. She gets so mad. Yeah, no, I, I, she's I would, up at like five and like the yeah. kids are crazy. You know. Yeah, yeah. Um, understandably, the, the success of Pokemon Go uh, caught everyone off guard. Uh, everyone yeah. at IGN, including everyone at Ni the developer Niantic Labs and Nintendo. Um, the game had server problems for weeks and weeks and oh months God, because yeah. no one like. It's so easy to forget because it came and went kind of fast. Like I saw a funny joke that was like, RIP Pokemon Go 2016 to 2016. <laughs> like its popularity has fallen off. But like there is that period where you all saw the video of just a massive crowd of people running through Central Park in all, New York. And all over the world. No <laughs> video game in the history of video games has ever done that. Like there was a party at Ocean Beach in San Francisco every single night. Just a mm -hmm. Pokemon Go For party weeks. with people shoulder to shoulder and people bringing boom boxes and just playing and dropping down yeah. lures. Nothing like that's ever happened. It was the real world embodiment of that old Mario 3 commercial where yeah. the guy's like, Mario, Mario, yeah. Mario. Mario. And it just pans out and the whole planet is standing there like in, in formation, like playing at once. Yeah. Pokemon Go felt like that. As someone that uh, has covered the mobile beat for a long time, I was a little, um, you know what, I, like I, they deserve every success in the world, but I thought it was odd or it was hard to not have mixed feelings about. There's been games that did almost exactly Pokemon Go's mechanics for years, you know, mm -hmm. Location-based games where you had to go to physical spots in the real world and get things or drop things off for other people. There's like crime-themed ones where you make dead drops, you know, and then you have to tell your buddy put a pin on the map and where it is and take over territory. Even Niantic Labs' previous game, uh, Ingress, was a lot like that, like taking over different city blocks. And um, it was odd. I guess it was just that Pokemon magic combined with that. that and we yeah. already knew that existed, especially for those original 151. I mean, Pokemon yeah. was already a worldwide phenomenon in 1997. Yeah. It was yeah. so big. Yeah. Like, like I wasn't playing at the time, but it, it was yeah. ubiquitous. And it just was, again, like everybody knew Pikachu. And this time the story wasn't this weird Japanese yeah. game is invading the United States. <laughs> it was not that. It was like Pokemon Go. Like everybody like, kind yeah. of knew what Pokemon was, so I thought was really interesting. It's like this perfect intersection of nostalgia yeah. and yeah. new, well, fresh-feeling gameplay. And it's yeah. such a powerful franchise. When Pokemon came out, the Game Boy was eight or nine years old. I mean, think about that. Like, it, so was, cool. it was ancient. It was this forgotten thing in your closet that you bought when you were, like, nine, and now you were, like, 18, and it was still there, and maybe your kid brother or sister, like, would pull it out and play old games on it. And, like, no, we're going to put our giant new super franchise on this ancient piece of hardware that we know everybody has. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the fact that they, it was so powerful and such compelling in, in the gameplay loop and the trading aspect that they could pull that off, that it boded really well for their for their endeavor to move that out into the ubiquitous mobile platform that just about every adult has their hands on now. It was such mm -hmm. a smart play on their part. I still see uh, more people, I see multiple people every day, every single day playing Pokemon Go on my bus. Mm -hmm. So it's mm. like its popularity is falling off. Like that, I play it every day. That yeah. days I finished my list, yeah. Yeah. my U.S. Pokemon list, the day that it expanded. So wow. I have the one forty three now. That's perfect. And it was crazy. It was, I got of all my shoulder to a cloister. I spammed candy for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks for it. It was. It, I've been playing nonstop. Yeah, like yeah. I play every day. Uh, on August second, the Xbox One S shipped, ah. starting the whole. Uh, Mid cycle refresh, and this is not even one of those. Well, it kind of is. It this is, is more powerful. Miniature. It's it's like, it has HDR, yeah, HDR, which is very yeah. confusing. That that That's was the lost. worst part about it is how confusing that is. I mean, I work in this business, and I attended E3. You know, I saw them get briefed on the Scorpio, and I'm like, wait, so the One S is slightly more powerful, but but a much smaller step up yeah. than the P PS4 Pro will be to the PS4, yeah. and then the Scorpio in 12 months. That's like the big upgrade. Like, it's very well. That's what the S stands for is slightly. Yeah, uh, that's what the S is. And Scorpio. No. I mean, I doesn't stand for that. I'm uh, happy to admit that I was super wrong about, you know, I assumed, and I think I even said on GameScoop, um, they announced the Scorpio. So who in the world is going to buy an Xbox One for the next 12 yeah. months until the Scorpio comes out? I genuinely thought Microsoft had made a major misstep. And it turns out that, um, you know, I don't know exactly to what to attribute that success, but uh, the Xbox One has been selling extremely well since the yeah. Scorpio. I was, was colossally wrong about that as well. I was like, the, I thought this was like announcing the 32X when Saturn. Yeah. 
had already been shown. And they're like, yeah, we're going to, re- there's this thing coming, but there's a much better thing coming in a year. So why would you ever buy this? Well, I, Apparently, a lot of people really disagreed with that yeah. assessment. It caused me to yeah. wait on the PlayStation Pro, though. And I've mm. never waited on a system, even an upgrade. I've got a 32X when I was a kid. You know? yeah. But I would, I'm would. i totally all about the, the PS Pro. That's really exciting to me. But I'm waiting because I think I can play most of those games that I want to play on the Scorpio. I want to do that first. Yeah. Yeah. I want to upgrade it. And also, I don't want to do my TV right now. You know? Yeah, It's confusing. On August 9th, uh, the most controversial game of the year was uh, released. Oh. Right, here we go. No Man's Sky. Oh, yeah, that was it, game. Was it that late? I think about it. I guess August. I remember it got summer. delayed. Yeah. It was supposed to be the week of E3. Jared <laughs> had such a different experience with this game because he played it pre-launch <laughs> for weeks, and it was unpatched and like completely different. It was yeah. a completely different it game was, with an exploit that you could like get to the center of the galaxy. Well, it had an exploit. Honestly, I think that the pre-release version in some ways was better than the post-release version. Uh, They tightened up the gameplay and made it harder to accomplish certain things. I think it was a mistake. Uh, Making it more open and easier was probably a good idea in that earlier build. Um, You wrote that guide twice. because I did write that guide twice because of that, and that really hurt. Um, I felt like that game was... (laughs) All you needed was to take the mechanics from Elite or or Sid Meier's Pirates. uh, and Just take the mechanics from some of the greatest games (laughs) of all time. And staple them onto that engine and you would have had a a killer video. It, it would game. have been cool if they added the Shadow of the Colossus Colossi. I'd have been good that yeah. too. Yeah, but I really cool. oh man, if you're on a planet, you're just like whoa, it's a Colossus. Yeah, uh, or like but, some Mario Galaxy platforming. Well, if you're amazing. on a planet, yeah, that'd be you cool. see anything but at just, all, that, that might be that cool. Might be just nice. take that buy low, sell high, <laughs> drug wars thing, and a, and a couple of like missions. Man, they did. it. That game should have been so good. I had a lot of fun with it, even in its even in its really uh, like corrupted it. format. Like a lot of fun with that you know game. That, you know the the in, when they first showed that giant brontosaurus walking around, yeah. it was really pretty beautiful and it was like cool. And there's like a idyllic scene. Yeah, like they got lake. sued for that. I finally got there in Final <laughs> Fantasy 15. Yeah. <laughs> that when you first get into that open world and yeah. there's the giant yeah. brontosaurus the pig, lake, yeah. it's so yeah. cool it's and awesome. it looks beautiful and it was exactly what I wanted. Dude, but that video where they have the, the yeah. welcome to Attenborough's voice and the yeah. Jurassic Park music yeah. and the welcome to Jurassic Park and they cut to the dinosaur and he's just like <laughs> <laughs> Dude, No so Man's cut. Sky I you know I like Hello Games big fan of Joe Danger Sean yeah. Murray's a nice guy that game is boring as hell yeah, it's so boring like you and I both I think it was you saying that you went through the tutorial and it's like you got to go get this rare mineral yeah. in the tutorial it's, and it's a 14 minute yeah, walk away that's and like I'm the like, first yeah. thing the game asks you to do is walk 14 minutes in this direction yeah I just but. went off and found Heridium like a minute away from my campsite and just took it back that well and was... I'm like and when I saw that pop up with the time thing and I'm like oh this is gonna be where they teach me about my boosters or mm-hmm. how to move my you know, skip my ship across the planet. Nope. Not just gotta walk. Yep. Just gotta walk the yeah. whole way. And I'm it, and I not for me. For my mind, for I all the game's flaws, the worst flaw in that game is is being attacked by three space pirates at once. It's just like, hey, you're attacked oh, by three space worst, pirates. Yeah. You can't run away. <laughs> you're underarmed. You're just going to die now. And that that was awful. It's just like, wow, well, thank you for creating a no Kobayashi Maru and right. in my new game. On August 17th, IGN exclusively announced Metal Gear Survive. Yeah. Oh, there we go. That's uh that game with uh, those uh Cactus head people from space with the diamonds in their skulls. Yeah, you know, Metal Gear. Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> oh, yes. They're like, hey, we're going to go to the end of Metal Gear and we're going to move to another dimension. And you know what? There's some weird stuff, and I'm okay with it. I feel like Konami, Konami, you got to tread carefully with this one, guys. I mean, um, it, it's like it almost doesn't matter if that game's incredible. Like, you know, it's this really yeah. multiplayer focus. Like, it could be a really great, you know, intricate, well designed game. And like, yeah, they're walking such a fine line. I feel they did that with a revengeance. Like, yeah, there's some there's some risk that series has taken, and it's not it's not great. Yeah, tactical espionage action is maybe just action now. <laughs> just action. Just I, action. I love that you use that phrase. That's that's fantastic. Isn't that for Metal Gear? Yeah, it yeah. is. Yeah. Tactical espionage action. Oh wow! On September fifteenth, the PS4 Slim shipped. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. got an upgrade there or an update. Uh, and then October thirteenth, PSVR shipped. Yep, and that that sucker was fun. I, I really like PSVR. Um, I don't know if it's going to hit that magical Game Boy price point that's going to make VR People take gonna off. People going to get that for, for uh, the holidays? You I don't know. I don't think they can it, anymore. It is, it is less, sold out, right? it is it less sold expensive. Out? It yeah. sold out I think so. Yeah. It is yeah. less expensive than any VR has ever been before that's actually like useful and fun to play mm-hmm. with, yeah. but it's still pretty expensive, yeah, and that's so the hard bit. So is somebody somebody's going to hit that Game Boy combination of, you know, it's 90 bucks and it's super accessible, and here's a great killer app, and when that happens, VR is going to blow up. I was hoping PSVR would 
be that it is still, I believe, the most accessible and enjoyable implementation of VR that most people can have. Just plug it and play VR. It makes you look the stupidest because you have those those yeah. uh, silly yeah. glowing ball joysticks. Yeah, and plug and play with a million. You just cords. look like a goof. Yeah. Oh, the magical things that look like sex toys that you're waving around. Yeah, yeah the move controllers. But yeah, they uh, uh, when people are playing that in the office and they're at their desk, like it was always funny seeing Dan Stapleton just kind of <laughs> loll back with like a thing on his face. Yeah, and mm-hmm. you could take selfies and stuff. But now when you, the people have the glowing thing on their face with the glowing sticks oh, in their hands and they're just waggling, it's really really funny. But we uh, but we should not should not gloss over it. Super Hypercube, great game. Uh, Thumper, great game. Res, particularly the Area X section. You're just like, wow, okay, I get why people say VR is a thing. I like we should hot. play. The super, super hot, hot really cool. Super fun. Yeah. I will say, yeah. Super uh, Hypercube was really go- goofy and fun, though. Sony, a couple weeks back, as we record this, had their big PSX conference mm-hmm. and almost no VR presence at the whole show. I think one mm-hmm. VR announcement one at all game, of PSX. Yeah. And, I didn't even think um, about that. Oh, no. That's not great. Like, that doesn't bode well for 2017. I mean, I don't know. Maybe they're going to wait and have a big second wave at E3. But, um, like, if you bought one of these things, what are you, you, you going to do with it next year? I'm hoping mm-hmm. for Duke Nukem 4D. Mm-hmm. Well, okay. The one thing I learned about this is that you can't take every game that exists and put it in no. VR oh, and yeah. make it work. Because yeah. when you move around with your controller, a lot of people get sick. Yeah. The good ones are almost and, entirely... And that changes everything, right? Because it's not just another screen you this buy. It changes everything. Yep. And most of the really good games this, at this point, I am thoroughly convinced of this. If I was just like going to go off and start my own studio right now, it would be to make a third-person VR game because all the really good ones i played have been third-person. Yeah. Like It's not the out-of-the-eyes thing that works. It's using a third-person object in 3D space. And the ones on that system that do that do it really well. And the people that don't get barfy from it, Super people. Yeah. So this is the year that virtual reality became commercially available, which is a really big deal. But, uh, you know, instead of being an explosion out of the gates, it's more like we all just got on the roller coaster and it's like just starting to go up the ramp. And then when that killer app finally becomes available someday, then we'll like the ride will really begin. It's the year VR Troopers came back into the mainstream. VR Troopers. Troopers 3, virtual reality. Uh, on October 17th, Sleeping Dogs developer United Front Games shut down. So sad. Yeah. Mm. What a weird, it, it, video game development is so weird. You made a game that a lot of people really <laughs> loved that yep. seemed to sell, you know, okay. Uh, yeah. And then your reward is you just toil away for a few years and get shut down. Yeah. It's a hit-driven business, man. Like I think a lot of people don't realize that independent studios, even giant ones like an Insomniac, or I pulled their name out of a hat, but you know, whoever, like any large developer, like you're living hit to hit. And if you have, you know, one shaky game and then one flop, like you're out of money often, or you don't get a publishing deal for your next project, and that's yeah. it. They call those THU cures. Yeah, it's very sad. THQ tears. Yeah, just kind of come down your teeth. Like, oh, tears. I think. Uh, I think uh, there are companies that have figured that out that that just put out a lot of little games all the time. I think Tim Schafer really has that sorted mm-hmm. out. Like yeah. they have hits every once in a while, but they always have something that's coming out. But like an Obsidian, uh, Obsidian is a company that does a combination of crowdfunding and you know self funding some of their own projects, and you know will pu- you know get deals with publishers. You know yeah. some sort of combination of let's have money coming in from two or three places and try to stabilize our business. Yeah. On October, oh, right. on October 18th, Red Dead Redemption 2 was announced. Woo-hoo! Probably the biggest new game announcement yeah. of the year, I think. Uh, yeah, so that's a real exciting game about cowboys done by the people that do some of the best open work, open world work in the business. And they made a great game the first time around. And generally speaking, their second efforts uh, are far stronger mm-hmm. than their already impressive first efforts. So... I think there's... You like GTA 2 better than GTA 1? I do like GTA 2 better than GTA 1. Uh, and 3, of course, much more than 2. We never two. got a table tennis uh, 2. Uh, we did not no, get a... Not I, yet. I, I just had my Wii version of table tennis out the other day. Uh, that was exciting. Uh, yeah, what a, what a goofy <laughs> game. I was going to say, uh, Red Dead Redemption has always been like... Not Red Dead, but Red Dead, the second one, the big open world one, is like GTA with a heart and with beauty. Mm. And I don't think GTA... It's so cynical and wry and, and yeah. mean... And, yeah, I, and I think John Marston can be that way, but he can also be a sympathetic murderer yep. in a fun way. <laughs> and then the people are cool in that game, uh, and they're, they seem a little bit less crazy than everybody in a parody of Los Angeles. Yeah. And uh, and then it's just beautiful. There's beautiful <laughs> Western set pieces that are no, – I shouldn't use that word set pieces. Beautiful Western sets that yeah. are really pretty. Yeah. Yeah, the, the Western setting lends itself much more to a more serious treatment. Um, I mean, GTA is built on cynicism uh, to a good degree. It's, parody, it's also built on great. Right? Yeah, it's parody. It's a DMA was was kind of skewering parts of society. It's part of what makes it <clears> funny <throat> and fun and, and provides its tone. It's part of crime movie, I guess, and those aren't right. par- You know, those are parodyable. Sure. Right, yeah, but I mean, westerns they, work very differently. Yeah. yeah. I, I, yeah, I don't know. Uh, GTA Five. Uh, you know, the son as the hardcore gamer. 
you know, it's such a schlub that you hate so much, even though the, how many of the millions of people that love GTA five, you know, dress like him, talk like him, act like him. Like do people even pick up on stuff like that? Like, I, no. I don't know. I'm, I, I, I appreciate both sides of like, I agree. GTA can be kind of mean and red dead redemption is a palate cleanser for that. But then GTA's meanness is also, you know, has its place. Well, that's well. part of what I love about what's your favorite GTA game. Five. Five? Yeah, I think my Chinatown Wars still. Even oh, God. What about the one set in the 60s that's all groovy? Oh, the, uh, the London? GTA, that's a GTA 1 London pack, yeah, the yeah. expansion. That's a fun one. You got that Austin Powers I've never Powers played part. it. I just always wanted to. I played it's like all lot. Austin Powers inspired. I played a lot of GTA 1. Like in college, we yeah. played multiplayer together. Yeah. Uh, on October 20th, the Nintendo Switch was revealed. It was yeah. revealed. I think that has a lot more wide appeal than I thought it would. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it's because of their marketing. And man, when it was just on, uh, yeah. what's his name? Show. Kim, uh, not Kimmel, Kimmel. The other one. No. Oh, not Kimmel. Not, yeah. Uh, what is Fallon? that guy's name? Fallon. Yeah. Jimmy Fallon. That's that other Jimmy. Yeah. That's that on late night. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Like there, they could really get the word out that this is a cool yeah. system that's different than other stuff. So much better than Wii U already. Like everybody's already yeah. more interested than they were in the Wii U. I mean, well, people want to love Nintendo. People mm -hmm. grew up with Nintendo and they care yeah. about, they like the Mario music. Music and uh, they care about the Zelda chime and like mm -hmm. that stuff's a part of our culture um, yeah. and Nintendo that doesn't mean they can do no wrong like if Nintendo screws things up like with the Wii U people won't buy into it but they definitely have a like a I guess you call it a house edge like mm -hmm. people are predisposed to want to buy into what Nintendo's you mm -hmm. know worldview is for gaming um, four out of five of the games they produce are really really good to exceptional like yeah. uh, the, they, they produce terrific games most of those are on their own hardware and so you want their hardware I looked at that thing and I saw Karen bringing it to her party yeah. and popping that kick and I was like, give me a new Choo Choo Rocket and give me four controllers, and this is the best night of my life. Like, Karen and I are going to play Choo Choo Rocket. Game, right? I do, but, but <laughs> Sega and I tend to do fun, fun stuff together. And uh, no, I'm, I do know this. Oh, give, man, give me Sea Man. Uh, so give me some Sea Man. That's right. I'm all about, I'm all about the Sea Man. You are getting oh, some. Oh, okay. You are Let's... getting new Shin, Shinmu. So. Don't, uh, don't get greedy. All right. uh, November 10th, about that. Sony shipped the PS4 Pro. <clears throat> they did. That's it was powerful. Yeah, it got the I like the uh, mode in that, which runs in a uh, high frame. Like mm -hmm. the other ones look good. I like them in 4K. It usually looks pretty good, but the high frame rate, like for some reason, looks like super slick and awesome. The Shadow of Mortar, oh my gosh! Yeah, that Shadow of Mortar, so cool. dude. We Absolutely. have a 4K TV with a PS4 Pro hooked up in a in a specific corner of the office, and like I don't have a 4K TV in my house, right? And I don't mm -hmm. have a 4K monitor, so it's hard to like you watch trailers, and you just don't get it. You know, yeah. you don't get it till you yeah. see it. And I saw Call of Duty running, and I'm just like, holy shit! Like it's insane. It, you know, it feels like a generation leap but it does, uh, it does. yeah but, that, it, but that's what know, this generation should have been yeah. it kind of makes me mad they just have a really hard time you know it reminds me of when the wii was first announced and they had to come up with all these insane ways to explain how the game was played you yeah. know like what what's the player doing and like now like how do you show off a 4k image to totally. someone that only has a 1080p tv like mm -hmm. yeah. the, the, and we don't go to stores anymore to buy things yeah. which makes it doubly difficult that yeah. we can't just walk into a big box box yeah. store and do that anymore yeah on November 11th, the NES Classic supposedly shipped. <laughs> I, I got one. I got one Don't that day. No, if uh, no one seems to be able to what find it. What another huge anywhere. surprising Nintendo hit? Yeah. It's completely I mean, crazy. I I was real happy about that. That thing is bodacious. It's got that real short cord, and I bought that real long extender from the weird company in Canada, and I was happy to get it. Weird and, company uh, in Canada. Yeah, and. Uh, uh, that thing, emulation is very often handled by people mm. in the video game industry as Do an we know afterthought. Who did this emulation? No, I don't. We don't know who did it, or I've never dug oh. it up. I don't know who produced it, but it is some of the best HD quality emulation I've ever seen. And uh, somebody put a lot of TLC into this uh, into this emulator, and it's it looks and plays great. It's got it's Final good. Fantasy One. That's the other thing. It wasn't like here's a bunch of crappy yeah. games you don't care about. It, it wasn't was like, the same Animal Crossing stock of NES games. It's, no, it was which wonderful. Over over One of the five best Final Fantasy games. Uh, I agree. <laughs> I completely uh, agree too. Final Fantasy One is probably still my favorite or second favorite. It's up there. Yeah. yeah, there's a difference good. between my favorites and what I would consider the best. Yeah, yeah. sure. That, that game is that is Matoya's often... Cave music. Oh, music oh man, really Matoya's Cave is so dope. That, the dopest the... of all the Final Fantasy songs. I've been, I've I'm been with jamming you. that in my Final Fantasy 15 yeah. car and driving yeah. around. Yeah, me too. Totally. That Matoya's Cave. Actually, that's going to be on that uh, that eight bit radio episode. Oh, of you just spoil the surprise, Jared. Oh, I did spoil it. On December 3rd at PSX, Sony had uh, two really big announcements. That new Uncharted game. What's it called? The Lost. Well, that standalone DLC. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. Is it Lost Legacy? 
that what it is? I can't remember. The it's the, yeah, that's the uh, well, like horde mode one, right? The hard, horde mode part? Is that the oh, one? Uncharted? No, I'm thinking of the wrong no, one. No, there's standalone story DLC oh, yeah, that stars Chloe. You didn't watch PSX. You have no idea what we're talking no, about. No, no. Uh, Marty did, was talking about horde Jammers mode, like too. Uncharted. Thing, no, that yeah. was a patch, a multiplayer patch that came Whoops, out. Whoops. Sorry about that. And yeah, that's, it looks good. It's like a standalone it, it half awesome. game yeah. about yeah. one of the uh, female leads from Uncharted 3. Yeah, I had the wrong game in my mind. The Last of Us Part 2 was announced. Oh. That everyone's very, very excited about. Yep. yep, we've talked about that just last week. Yeah, yeah. young lady playing, playing the guitar. Yeah. She's got all that blood on her. And then tomorrow, December fifteenth, Nintendo will launch its first mobile game. Yeah, Super Mario. Not Run. their first mobile game. Mito game. Well, Mito yeah, Mito Mito Mito. <laughs> no, so rude, Damon. Not their first app, yeah. but their no. first game. That Super Mar- that Super Mario looks fun. Yeah, I it's I'm fun. not a big fan of Endless Runners. I never wanted a Super Mario Endless Runner. I wasn't crazy about the idea, but that looks like a fun old game. Yeah, yeah. but sometimes you have to tell yeah. people what they want. You can't ask them what they want. Yeah. Yeah. says Steve Jobs. Uh, yeah, I look forward to uh, playing that game. He was a mean old man. <clears throat> a couple of news items from this week to clean up so we make sure we cover everything this year. Uh, we learned late last week that Majesco has exited the game's business. I yep. saw the same joke repeatedly, but it was funny every time, which was I didn't know they were still in the game's business. <laughs> yeah, it's People still play this game? THQ is still in the game's business? Well, THQ Nordic. They, which didn't they come back or something? There's a yeah. company called THQ Nordic. Yeah, they came back. Yeah, so there was, the, uh, the, there was that neat piece on Polygon where the guy wrote about the oven mitt, uh, the, the Cooking Mama oven mitt, and how mm. that was his best piece of game swag he'd ever gotten. Mm. That's really uh, cool. It was really a funny article. So Majesco's uh, been around since 1985, I believe. <gasps> yeah, I remember Majesco from... The 80s, but, for sure. you know, uh, Jared and I were looking. Yeah, we sad. couldn't find uh, evidence of games that they published until the late 90s oh, for the Game really? Boy Advance. So I don't know yeah. what they were doing all that time. Well, were they, they called were, something else? You they know, were, they were shovelware, you know, for a long time. K- kids games. And, you know, yeah. some of them were okay. Shovelware is maybe a little mean. So they were Majesco Sales Incorporated. And we did some digging and couldn't find a lot. So we got a phone number and we really just yeah, ought to call them and ask them. I think that's the plan. I don't think anyone there would know. Dear sir, madam, which NES games did you put out? You'll see their names attached to S. NES games, but those are all ports they did for like GBA or GBC later yeah. on. What if their phone number is like, press one if you would like to talk about the <laughs> Nintendo Entertainment System. <laughs> Amazing. Two if you'd like to talk the well, Sega Master System. A real, bit, a real interesting bit of uh, video game trivia is that in 1998, Majesco released the Sega Genesis 3. Oh, there we go. Yeah. So it actually released a piece of hardware for a Sega. smaller Sega. Yeah, the smaller yeah, Genesis. Yeah, I remember Genesis. that one. I, yeah. The, yeah, the yeah. number three. On yeah, they produced their own Genesis. They produced their own Game Gear, too. Interesting. Uh, later yeah. on. And we uh, talked about that on a previous scoop. How about how Brazil has all those versions of Sega hardware? That oh, was yeah. one of the facts that yeah. Jared yeah. made yeah. up. Yeah, yeah, one of the <laughs> facts. Was, but no, Brazil has such, such later cool on, software. Later on, uh, Majesco would release Blood Rain and Blood Rain Two. R A Y N E. Yeah, they actually published Psychonauts. Yep, yep, they, they did the publish your Psychonauts. And then the Wii years, cool. the Wii and DS what years were the real boon years yeah. for did uh, they do elf bowling? a sort of CT, <laughs> a C-tier uh, publisher like Majesco because they had the Cookie Mama games. Yeah. And then all the other Mama games. There was Gardening Mama, yeah. there was yeah. Babysitting Mama. They just yep. flooded the Wii and the DS. Flamethrower yeah, Mama. Those games. Flamethrower Mama. You have yeah. me thinking about the best piece of video game swag now. Huh? I don't yeah. like, I don't take any it. of it. I don't keep any of it. I, I don't want any of that stuff in my house, really. Um, I have a Psychonaut sphere that, that does the spark things. It's like a Van de Graaff generator type thing. Oh, that's pretty good. You know what that is? Where you touch, remember yeah. the 80s, you touch a thing yeah. and it sparks yeah. out? It's like a Psychonauts one of those. I, I have a bunch of gold medal USS Enterprises on stands. Oh, yeah, like, yeah. everybody gave you those. Yeah, I'm great. trying to collect enough of them that one day I can reenact the yeah. scene from First Contact where I'm going to be just like, no! And smash them oh. all, and the lady can be like, I you thought you were gonna say the ships. scene where all the enterprises from yeah. the different timelines Riker's come in. There's right. Riker with the scraggly beard. <laughs> oh, he's like, like, No, everything's, the still everything's here. terrible in my <laughs> yeah. universe. No, I'm talking about the part where Picard gets angry and like smashes them all, yeah, with, yeah. and she's like, You broke your little ships. And yeah. then he's like, Oh, okay. he the movie's terrible. Right. Okay, I, I want to, like oh. what do you say? Well, that was a Battlestar Galactica thing. I oh, actually only first So, you know, in Battlestar Galactica, where Edward James almost gets so worked up and so enraged that the model ship he's been working on for years and years on the show it tosses it on the floor, he smashes it because he's yeah. so worked up. That model ship was uh, a rental. Like, they didn't own it. They were renting it from some prop company. And Edward James almost improvised him smashing it and being all worked up. And it was either insured or not insured. That part of the story I don't remember. But they had to pay for, you know, the, the, it wasn't like a planned thing. He just smashed up some prop company's ship. And That's Ed, great. Edward James almost actually went bankrupt from that and ended up being homeless and he lives on the street. <laughs> <laughs> He's having to those, those library weed posters to make ends meet. 
we did find out this year uh, or this week that uh, Ukulele Ukulele has an April 11th release date. It'll be out for PS4, Xbox One, and PC for 40 bucks. Yeah, a yeah. fun-looking game reminiscent of a crappy game that you may Greg. have played. Oh, boy. Yeah, Damn it. Oh, yeah. Come yeah. on, Jared. Yeah. It if looks not, fun. If I want to play the game. If you're not careful, you're the not going to be allowed back on the show The crappy game is referring to Choo Choo Rocket, just so we're clear. Uh, yeah. But they included some, uh, some bad news for Wii U owners. The Wii U version of the game has been canceled, I don't, or, or that port has been hopefully moved over to the Switch. I think they did announce Switch support, right? Well, so, I, yeah, they announced... Wait. Uh, something like that. Okay. Uh, but first of all, people are disappointed because, you know, obviously this is a spiritual successor to Banjo-Kazooie, which is mm-hmm. a Nintendo game. So people, a lot of people wanted to play this game on a Nintendo platform. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Their reasoning is strange to me. They say they can't bring it to Wii U because of unforeseen technical issues. Well, the Wii U, but does, I mean, it won't it exist a, by then. That's a big technical <laughs> issue. Yeah. Yeah. The Wii U has a quarter of the RAM is that uh, what it of its is? counterparts. It's just like it's being made for current gen platforms, PS4, I, Xbox One. I, I think they just looked and went, why would we make a game for something there's no market for? The Wii U is, is as dead as my great grandmother at this point. And oh. I mean, that that's, it's over. It, it's done. Uh, Nintendo has unceremoniously R. chopped R. its head off. Yeah. Uh, they have ceased to release significant software well, for it, it for the last several months. what if it continues to haunt you like a ghost? Well, then it'll be the ghost of Christmas yet to Wii U, and that'll be a good I mean, I think, like, story. If the Wii U is a dead console, release it on the Switch instead. Like, I yeah. get that that bums people out that they kickstarted it, you know, under the promise yeah. of one thing. But, like, I don't know. Like, the gaming landscape has changed. Yeah. yeah. I know release are, it for the current Nintendo console. They are going to allow people to move their pre-order to an, yeah. another platform. Makes sense. However, yeah. they did not... A f- you know, 100% confirm that it's coming to the Switch. They said, oh. we are now working very closely with Nintendo to look Ooh. to look to bring ukulele to the upcoming Nintendo well, yeah, Switch. That, that's much worse news if it doesn't come to We're the Switch. We're looking forward to yeah. exploring the opportunity. So uh, it's not like... Yeah. You've got to imagine Nintendo made it at least halfway easy with, with an SDK of some kind to port yeah. Wii U projects to the Switch when they realized they were yeah, going to have to kill the Switch. Wii U. Why why, why take late generation Wii U games and not make them Switch launch titles if you have the opportunity? Maybe. Yeah. Well, but it's this is Nintendo we're talking about. There is that. All right. Wrapping up our 2016 coverage, do you know what the uh, number one IGN article of the year is? The GTA 5 the most, Secret Did you include? This is. Uh, did not, you include wiki pages? No, not wikis. Most, GTA 5 Secret Page. It includes reviews? No Man's Sky review. Uh, that was our number one review. Uh, what's that? That was our number that one review. That is our number one review, but the most popular article of the year is not a review. Ooh, dang. For the second year in a row. Is it top 25 GBA games? It is our top, top 25 yes. GBA games <laughs> article. You're emulating the things, audience. The most read artic- IGN article of the year. Two years running. Yep. But. Uh, if you take article pages into account, as in wiki article pages, mm-hmm. then GTA Cheats and Secrets <laughs> yeah, is that's what number I one. Say. And Pokemon uh, List is the second one after yeah, that. Yeah, the most popular game on IGN of the year is GTA V. Mm. Yeah. Uh, no Man's Sky was our number one review, our most read review, but the runner up may surprise you. After No Man's Sky? After No Man's Sky. The second oh, I know most read review of the year. It's uh, 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 the shooting dumb game. Uh, the shooting dumb It's It's uh, the open world <laughs> division. No, it's close. Uh, Far Cry Primal. Oh, uh, it's the primal. second most read review of the year. No kidding. Well, it, it's had the longest. And it, well, that's true. It did come out in this is April. Cr- this is chronologically you really, weighted. You really yeah, caught that game, game, right, Dimon? That's a game you really enjoyed. I actually right? really enjoyed yeah. that game. Well, you know, I mean, No Man's Sky came Wasn't out division months and months after it. Way up there? Yeah. That's up there, too. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah, GTA V mm-hmm. is the most popular game of the year. Narrowly beat Pokemon Go. Our number one news story of the year was Pokemon Sun and Moon officially announced. Nice. And the most popular Scoop. non-game topic on IGN this year was oh. Game of Thrones. Oh, okay. No surprises there. Yeah. It's good. Which leads me to my final year in review question Uh-oh. for you guys. Was 2016 a good year for video games? Mm. 2016 is the best year for video games of the 21st century. I couldn't disagree with you more. Oh, wow. I think 2016 had more good games and more variety hmm. of good games than any year but I can remember. One of those remember. years had Mass Effect 2. 
Mm. And another one had Resident Evil 4. I get that. But yeah. if you look at the Super spectrum of video <laughs> games released this year, every genre, and, and including genres that didn't even exist when those games came out, or at least weren't popularized, I think the height had of the one DS or two examples of extraordinary... PS3 years? Nope. Come on. I will take With the this DS year, thrown in there? I challenge you to go back to January of this year and go through the IGN reviews page. You will find so many nines and above and, and high eights. That's because our staff and is you're just, gonna read just those so and, excited about But you look about at them just games. like, oh my gosh, Doesn't that game was great. Great. That game was great. That game was great. And they're all different than one another. You had, yeah, it's, you had mean, things like, like Oxen Free and Firewatch, but you had them across from things like The Witness. But then you jump over and you have Overwatch. And then and then you have incredible, massive adventure games like Odin Spear. And then you have extraordinary RPGs like Final Fantasy 15. And then you have, well, actually, it was a great year for remakes. You had things like Day of the Tentacle and Twilight. But anyway, that's a whole other talk. But this year had a so baffling had, concentration of incredible video yeah. games. No, there was no Witcher 3, no GTA 5. There were, but like, those were games no, that stood Bioshock. out. Those yeah, games no, stood like, out no, both on the Witcher and Metal Gear alone last year? Yeah. That was no, awesome. Yeah. I, I'm telling 2015, you guys. 2015, just like. Again, just go to IGN.com slash reviews, start in January, and read through. You're going to be like, I made a list the other day. It was like 75 titles that I was like, these were all games that I've either played or I must play. What about that and year? And there has Okami been a year like that in and, ages. Yeah. And uh, Twilight Princess Again, came out the same. Again, those are years yeah. of two good games. But we're talking about a year of, of that kind of awesomeness happening. No, I'm just saying everything else is good Every month. Too. Yeah. No, I, uh, but the 3DS was I, so bad this year. That's the problem play, with your argument. Yeah. Fire Emblem was this year? That was it. That was a beautiful game. Beautiful game. Um, Mario, uh, uh, I didn't Mario like Maker came much this time. to 3DS this year. That's a great so, game. We, so we gave that a pretty I did play a lot of fun games this year, but it's just I just wouldn't... It's, I wouldn't... Mm. I wouldn't say 2016 is a top tier but I think year it was a for good year. video games. Uh, I, 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 think, a, I think it's one of the year. one of the ten best years for video games all time, and the best year for video games since 2000, yeah, like since the return of the century. Disagree. Yeah. I What's the best year? The 90s. 98. <sighs> Yeah, I know. Oh, I'm not even so close. Amazing. Not even close. <laughs> it's a, go back and look at this year. It's unreal. That was, uh, that was Sean, Stop our it. producer, chiming in. We're I gonna, just pulled like ten games out of my butt, and I didn't prepare for this. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> thank you. Sorry, guys. We're gonna Still replace better. you, Jared. Still better. <laughs> uh, no, audience, sad. go home and take a look at this. You're gonna um, be amazed. Jared, right. it is the time has come. Oh no! The time I'm has come for your own personal video game twenty questions. I put a call out last week for some more obscure uh, suggestions, and I got lots of great ones. I've narrowed it down to a few choices, so we're going to ask you to step out of the room, and I'm going to consult oh. with Justin and I like Sam. This. Okay, I like you this. Just plug his ears Dodon Pachi Daiojo. Please step out of the room. <laughs> All right, and we're gonna... Choaniki. And Do we sure. want to choose one that he's not going to get or one that he has a chance of getting? We want to pick one that there is actually a chance I'm of getting. I'm getting murdered. So, Sheer and the Wanderer. Make sure you're away from the uh, studio so you don't hear what we're saying. And I'll come grab you in just a moment. Don't knock Jared over the cameras. I can go grab him. Yeah, well, one of us will go yeah. grab him. Okay. Just, if you leave, Samurai are liable to take over the show. Okay, guys. I show a pick- <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Make sure yeah, he was so slow to close that door. Yeah, he's walking out. Oh, he's a cheater, right? I've seen him cheat. pretty, pretty what do we slowly. Got? Okay, how about uh, from Robert Romine, who was a judge in Cookville, Tennessee? He suggests General Chaos mm. on the Sega Genesis. That's a pretty mm-hmm. good one. Uh, we just talked about that uh, at our desk with Steve like a couple weeks ago, so that's a little risky. But well, but he knows it's also it. it's also not Japanese made. Well, yeah, that's uh, good. It's well, actually yeah. Another He's expecting option, that. Another option. Mike uh, suggests Air Guys. Oh, I like that. I like a that. Squaresoft fighting game with Final Fantasy characters no, for PlayStation that, One. So. PlayStation I like, One. Game. I like that more. And that's uh, that's tricky because it came to arcades and PlayStation One. And then uh, Michael from Chicago suggests Battle to Battle Toads and Double Dragon. Mm, that's good. Which is good because it came to NES, Super Nintendo, Genesis, and Game Boy. Mm-hmm. Made by Rare. Yeah, made by Rare, developed by. Or so, if we wanted to be a better segment, we should choose something like that because I won't be able to answer the questions about the PlayStation One. Okay, but the PlayStation One is probably the best choice to stump him. I think he'll get Air Guys, and you guys just want to do it. Let's try. Let's try Battle Toads and Double Dragon. Okay, if he gets there real fast, we'll give him two. And All right, the, go grab. Just play it up that it's really hard, and then he, that'll throw him off. Okay, yeah, yeah. he'll start. He's gonna. His mind's just gonna go to these right. weird Japanese games. Yeah, exactly. Games. I like that. All right, here we go. Here we go. Back. Bring him back in. And one special thing that's going to happen here, Jared, is that Damon's going to give you uh, a yes or a no, and then I'm going to give you the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> for every uh, for every question you get wrong, you have to remove one article of clothing. I'm all right with that. So, so I'd like to and preface- if you get down to only uh, your bare body, you have to take a finger off each. Oh. I like to preface this with three quick statements. First, Sam is the true 
secret weapon of IGN 20 questions. It's always been a group effort. And and Justin's ridiculously good at this. It's a group but effort. Sam, time and again, has kind of pulled this out, I feel like, of, of the nah, obscure. I, so I get too but much thanks. credit for that from people. Is this psychological warfare? Uh, no. Second. Uh, <laughs> second fighting Damon on this. I am horrified and I'm going to lose this because people give me way too much credit on this stuff uh, because I like a few obscure old games and they think I like we gave I know you three all obscure old games. solid work days to study for it. You, you had no yeah. other assignments. No yeah. other yeah, assignments there. I've been doing anything else now. just <laughs> studying that. That's right. I did do that the other day, but that was, there was a weird reason for that. Um, and then the, uh, the, the, final, the final one here is that 20 questions always gives me a lot of stress and terrifies me. I've always enjoyed being a part of it. Uh, but I felt like my teammates have carried me because this kind of high pressure trivia. Right, I don't ask know why. This is your moment. Okay, our suggestion comes from Michael from Chicago. Michael from let Chicago. Let the questioning begin. Dodon Pachi Diojo. All right, let's see. Um, was this game produced uh, before January uh, 2000? Yes. All right. Uh, <laughs> is this a PC game? What What do you mean? Is it a game for the personal computer? No. No. What did you think he meant? No, I just want to like... Uh, was this game produced before January 1st, 1990? No. All right. Uh, was this game originally released on a cartridge media? Yes. Is this an arcade game? No. Okay. Um, was this game produced in Japan? Wait, wait, wait. Is it originally released on a cartridge and then you asked if it was an arcade game? Yes. <laughs> Okay. That makes sense. All right. Well, oh, that, that, no, that, he, he makes he's sense trying in, to narrow down all the games that were ported from console to arcade. Well, it makes sense in Jared's head because he's thinking about cartridge. He's been thinking of like SNK arcade carts. The man has a good point. I like the uh, the, the comment on you, on last week's episode when it was like, "Is this a is this a, a, a shooter? Is this a first person shooter? Yes. Is this a two D game? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not good at this game. I'm not good at it. it People give me too much to credit. Like Alien versus Predator, or is that what it's called? I, I, I think it would, be, it would be false of me to say that I don't Jack know Moore. a fair bit about weird old games because I played a lot of them, but I'm not yeah. an expert. People give me way too much credit. Um, uh, is it a Japanese game? Uh, no. Crap. All right. Yeah, that's um, he told you. Yeah, that's really going to nail me there. Um, okay, so not produced in Japan. It's cartridge based. Um, is this game on the you, Super Nintendo Entertainment System? Is it? You're right, was the question, is this game on the Super Nintendo? Yeah. Yes. All right, Super Nintendo. Double crap. Um, Double crap? Yeah. It's the greatest console. Oh, it is, but it, it puts me. There's, the overlap with the SNES just sucks when yeah. it comes to narrowing things down. That's the problem. Um, especially non Japanese game on the SNES. Uh, is this a a game focused on like strategy and tactics? No. Okay, so it's not Metal Marines. Um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Um, <laughs> Uh, did this game, uh, is this game an RPG? No. Look, if we would have chose a different one of these and he would ask these same questions, he would have probably gotten it just yeah. now, Yeah. which is crazy. Yeah. yeah. But it's, it's not the case. Okay. So it's a S game on the SNES. Um, crap. It's not, uh, it's not strategy and tactics oriented. It's non-Japanese. That's going to be murder. Um, it's not tactical though. That takes a lot of the weird. It's a sports game. No. That's right. 10. Wrap. Uh, is it a side-scrolling game? Yes. Yes. All right. Um, but non-Japanese, it takes a lot of the weird stuff out. Okay. Man, it feels weird to be in your shoes, Damon. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like it. No. You don't like it? I love no. it. Is I this like game knowing <laughs> everything. Is this game renowned for its difficulty? Uh, guys? No, it's not. Okay. No. Okay, so it's not Prince of Persia. Um <laughs> Let's see, it's not renowned for its difficulty. Uh, is this a also, license game? Uh, I know. Not what? No, right? No, it's say. not a licensed game because it, it's not licensed from something pre-existing that's big. Yeah. Okay. No. Oh man, that, that's that's a terrifying hint. How uh, is that? A, it's a good hint. Does this game yeah. feature two-player simultaneous play? Yes, yes. for sure. Oh, is it a fighting game? No. Is it a brawler? Yes. That's 16. 16. You got this. 16. You got this. this. Okay, so it's not. Look at you. Uh, Finally, you landed one. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm worried I was too late. So it's not Polyrura because that was Saturn. It's not. (laughs) It's not. Did you just make up a game title? <laughs> oh no, Pooty Roll is so good. Is it Polybius? No, Pooty Roll is like this pastel colored Oliver Twist beat em up. It's great. Um, 
Uh, let's see. <laughs> Reel it in. Yeah, right. I can't help you. I, American made brawler on the SNES. Uh, not Japanese. We, we never yeah. said it was American made. Oh, this, oh the non Japanese. Oh, crap. Now it's. Oh, no. It's going to be like, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, I'm going to get murdered here. There's so many common questions you haven't asked yet that'll help with this. Yes, there. I should. Like, you know, I could ask about hats, for example. That no, might be I useful. mean, even helpful ones. <laughs> Yeah, uh, whenever I play, we're playing video game 19 questions. Yeah, <laughs> that's very funny. Just I think I'm going to fail at this most likely. All right. um, You're doing a yeah, great sorry. job. So Give us some more questions. I know. it's Well, it's hard when it's only the one because you're just like, oh, crap. Yeah. I'm getting narrow. Like it's 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 clamping down here. Noose is tightening. <laughs> um, uh, does this game feature uh, guns as a weapon? Yes, I want to say yeah. I would I would have said no, but I don't, I honestly don't know. Ooh. Yeah, I can't give you that one. Okay, well, it's freebie. We can't answer it. Can't answer that one. Oh man, wasn't did you, say, did you say for your character? Like no, I just said feature like like in use by the. Um, I mean, it's not Japanese. Wait, wait, wait. What's the so question? Ask the question. Are you again. asking about your, yourself or if just guns are in the game? I Does was that asking, even help you? I was more asking about the... You know what? I just like that I got a nebulous answer. I didn't okay. have to use a question. Jeez, so I'm going to stick Jared, with that. I knew uh, he was going to pull stuff okay. like this. Okay. It's not Bloody Wolf. It's not... Um, geez. It's not Cadillacs and Dinosaurs. That was Capcom. That's it's a not, good one. Um, That's a good one. That is a good one. Uh, should pick that one. <laughs> let's see. Um, <clears throat> you know, I may not get this. Knights of the Round is Capcom. Um you still have four questions. I know. Plus, I'm we talked about making it 25, which seems fair to me. With I don't know. That's oh, one yeah. person, but oh, oh, you guys are being questions. too kind. You have nine questions left. You Let's go. Really get this. Oh, my Let's gosh. Let's go. Just, yeah, this no. Is just, like. just win this. <laughs> Two-player, simultaneous, just all the ones I played were Japanese. Nine questions left. Not based on a license. A two-player. A two-player. Beat them up on Super Nintendo. Yeah, this should not be that hard. Um, not made in Japan. Here's what I'm worried about, Damon, is that... I'm having trouble thinking of a two-player beat em up on Super Nintendo yeah. I didn't play that wasn't, or that I played that wasn't Japanese. This That's might be that what I, I missed. Yeah, I say many times at 20 questions, around 15 or 16 questions, that I just give up. And that's because there's no questions mm -hmm. that will help me. There's I'm just still like, a really crucial set of important questions yeah. you need to ask that we always ask when we play this game. Oh, crap. Now I'm doubly worried. And what you, if I you did touch near it with one of the questions. Shoot! I don't know what it is! Oh, the agony! It's, okay. Well, oh, the well, you gotta you gotta play take, the game, Jerry. Take more. I know. I gotta play the game here. Uh, ask, you can ask so about so many different things. Yeah, so many different things. Well, that's that's the that's the and fear. There's narrow so it down to the things we always ask. Yeah, well, that's what I'm worried about. Um, you've done genre. You've done year. I've done what year else can genre. You ask I've about? done license. I've done nation. I've done. I, I you mean, didn't I, do nation. I did do nation. It's not you Japanese. Is one. this an American? Game? No. I don't know if that's going to help you much. So it does no. help. It does? Okay. I mean, it eliminates, I mean, you know. It eliminates a lot. Oh, Lord. Um, do you play as a human? Yes. Do you play as a human-ish in this game? There is There's human additional play. questions you can there ask around. There is human play. <laughs> There's human, human play. play. Oh, man. I'm going to screw this up so bad. Um we're going to have to play this, this one at 1.5x speed. Is this yeah. game critically received positively? Like, is this a, a game oh, people like? I don't think it matters. No, okay. That one uh, I, can't, I can't answer. I can give you my rating. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what's the clay what's rating? A solid 5.5. .5. Oh, this is a bad game. Well, so, it's a, it's so a mediocre a game. game. Everybody here knows it. Like, everybody's played this, it sounds like. I'm, I don't I'm think not, people here have played it. I have. Yeah. I'm not incredibly familiar with it. I'm more familiar with it as a title than something I spent time with. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. I am going to. Is this a um, is this a late SNES game? Uh, no, no. I'm really. Yeah. Gonna, it's yeah. not based on an established license. That's killing me because almost all those games are based on something. All right, nineteen. Oh so man. six questions left. You still haven't um, asked about a big genre. section of. I know. I'm forgetting, and I, I'm like, that's about I, the freaking genre. Well, I said it was a brawl. I said it was a Where brawler. It's set. Like setting? Oh, yeah. okay. Doesn't so that what, help you? I don't know. Uh, is it set in a fantasy world? No. Yeah, it is. Well, mm. well, hold on. Oh, you, well, you mean like in dragons and stuff like that? Yeah, is that what you mean? yeah. No. Then no. No. That's twenty questions. All right. So I've technically I've already screwed this up. So we're we're giving you five. Is it set bonus in questions. modern times? 
Mm, no. Is that true? No. Are you sure? Not, I am sure. You're I'm sure. sure. Yes. Okay. okay. No. I can cite direct evidence for why it's okay. not set in modern no. times. Oh man, it's a set in space. Yes. Yes. Brawler set in space. Um, does that have great music? Mm. Yeah, it is okay music, but I don't think it's known for it. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> two music's cool. questions left. If you hit two buttons together in this game, do you lose go. part of your life but do a super attack? I can't answer that one. Like Final Fight style? Yeah, like like to pull the Mike Hagar. I don't know. I don't know that. All right. Um, With two questions left, you know it's kids. a brawler on the Super Nintendo where there is human play and it was not made in Japan or America. You don't use guns, so it's not alien. Um, it's, not me. it's the the country of origin that's screwing me here. We didn't say uh, you don't use guns. We said we couldn't answer that question. Yeah. I mean, how many? How much should we help Jared? This are there robots of... in this game? Surely there are robots. Yeah, there's robots. There, yes. Last question Surely has to be your guess. Robots. This is your guess. Oh, uh, man. I've screwed this whole thing up. Yeah, you're in I real trouble failed here. failed terribly. I don't yeah. want to throw you off because there's a whole wedge of things that you, I think you've just Well, it's not an arcade game, and I'm, thinking, I keep, I'm stuck on brawlers. Mm-hmm. You were doing so well until <laughs> until it all <laughs> went until sideways. Until it all fell apart. Yeah, I was Jared, on the your right guess track. is, you got to give us a guess. All right. We're at the end. Uh, the Black Bass. The Black Bass. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Released in 1993. And the what do we have here? For the Super Nintendo and the, the Sega Genesis. And the, NES. and the NES. And the NES. And the Game Boy. Developed by Rare. Okay. Published by Trade West. Okay. Battletoads and Double Dragon. Yeah, I deserve what I get there. <laughs> That's. Wow. Develop, wait, Trade West is. So, wait, it wasn't developed sure. by Trade Oh, it's by Rare. Yeah. Yeah, rare. That's so stupid. Yeah, rare ruins everything yet again. I man, <laughs> rare ruins everything yet again. Oh, Jared Penny, that's a box that quote right there. That was even that word. I, I own that game. <laughs> yeah. Do you need to? I think the thing that happened there is that you said, "Is it licensed?" And then you left it. But like the sequels thing, you never asked. Yeah, you didn't is ask it about part sequels. of the series. I didn't ask about yeah. sequels. I got yeah. stuck. I was like, "Wait, this is an original IP." I even thought about Double Dragon for a second, but I didn't mm-hmm. go yeah, yeah. there. And Double Dragon, I, the I have failed everyone. The Battletoads use guns, don't they? Uh, there so. are the bad guys. You can pick up a gun. Sometimes. Yeah, you can pick yeah. up a gun I in Battletoads. Oh, do, 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 do. Yeah. yeah, no, it's, it happens in space. The, the, the very first level is in space. But the point is that there are guns in the universe. Like, remember, there's the part where you in Battletoads one, which is really funny. Here's it's first person. Yeah. Here's the real Second truth, person. the why I missed yes. this one. Um, you guys had excellent answers to the questions. I own this game on NES. And I own this game and I owned it on Genesis. All right. I did not own it on SNES. That's why it's not a good question to say, that, is this yeah. a Super Nintendo game? Because like, it, it can be as, yeah. as well as other platforms. I had it on two of those oh. Maybe platforms. we can start asking, is this on three platforms or, or more? <laughs> we'll, turn, yeah. we'll, we'll turn the tables around really, on Damon and see guys how well. Really hey, I, I I'm mad though. though. I, I, own, I owned this game. I owned this game like four years ago. <laughs> like, I mean, I, I, I still had my copy. Yeah. I, I really Are we going to do another one? I mean, I'm happy to take all the time in the world. I don't know if everyone has time to do another one. Are we going to do what we're playing? Do we have time for that? Uh, we can do that. But Jared, uh, we, we our other options were general chaos. Uh, okay, so the tactics question would have nailed that. Yeah, wasn't that cool? Yeah. You would have nailed it. Or thing. air guys. That I would have missed. Oh, I don't think PS1 fighting game. Yeah, I mean, I played it, but I would have missed it. Yeah, I'd have missed it. I thought for sure. I never heard of you. But but General Chaos, I would have gotten to. That that is an all-time, like, favorite. I love that game. And we just talked about it. That's why, yeah, we thought it would be too recent. Battletoads vs. Double Dragon was a great pick. It's not even that obscure. Honestly, I think I was trying I got a lot of really obscure games that I had never heard of before. So I wanted to pick something that we thought maybe. Kickle Cubicle. Man, Rare ruins everything. They ruined Donkey Kong. They ruined that stupid bear and bird game. And now they ruined Come on, come on. Be- okay. Real quick, before we go, what are we playing? Uh, I specifically wanted to do it this week because I'm playing through Call of Duty Advanced, or not Advanced Warfare, Infinite Warfare, and I actually mm. love the campaign. It's really fun. It's mm. really interesting. Uh, about a third of it is yeah. space dogfights. Um, you're the captain of a ship, and you get to choose... Like, do you want to move on? You have the little map, and do you want to choose to go on to the next main mission? Or there's different little side missions where you can steal tech from the opposing faction, and that powers up your character. And um, I'm, I'm, you know, it's not like a 10 out of 10 incredible, but I'm really, really enjoying it a lot more than I expected to, and I haven't enjoyed a Call of Duty campaign this much yeah. in many years. I want to play that campaign. It's, I haven't yet. It seems really fun, uh, but I was just going to say it's, it'll be really interesting to see. We get MPD tomorrow. 
November. I mean, November. The, game, the game bombed by it. Like, yeah. there's nobody playing it on Steam. I can't wait to see what the sales for that are or where it ranks on the list because analysts predict uh, uh, launch sales, at least at retail, could be down as much as 50% yeah. year over year. It's so. such a bummer that they, they seemingly, and I don't know about the multiplayer. I've heard some chatter that maybe the multiplayer is a little busted and that's why people didn't buy in. But campaign wise, like, it secretly got the best robot buddy. You have this really cool robot sidekick for the whole game. Um, I, I like better than uh, Titanfall. I haven't played Titanfall's game. campaign yet. Titanfall but the, is really fun too. He's, it's, uh, I, it's a big surprise for me how much I'm enjoying it. Mm. Uh, I'm still playing Final Fantasy 15, like Sam, mm-hmm. and I really love that game. That game is super fun. Uh, but I've also I'm looking forward to playing Invisible Ink, which is free this mm-hmm. month oh, for yeah. uh, PS Plus subscribers. So yeah. I've been wanting to play that game for a long time. Downloaded it, but I haven't been able to tear myself away from Final Fantasy 15. I, I've been playing with my NES Classic still. Uh, still making my way through the second quest, uh, slowly but surely, trying to do it without a guide. Don't do that. Um, I've just about broken down to the point that I'm ready to go dig the guide out. Can yeah, you find the cause... dungeons? Oh, least? yeah, I can find most of them. I just uh, can't but find heart the, pieces. Yeah, and well, that's not just heart pieces. The dungeons have like one way invisible walls yeah. at, at some point, and mm. I'm just like, yeah, that's not fun. All right, really, at this point, I just want to look up you a guide. Just, and... You should just quit. It's but so... they're always <laughs> in the center of the wall. So you they just have are. To rub it, but you don't wall. know if you go this way or that, and then you go. It turns out you can, and then you just end back where you started. I recommend graph and, paper. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's really reached the point. If you're played Legacy of the Wizard, which uh, is, no, but I'm aware of it. Okay, so <laughs> it, at some point, how is that the one where you have multiple characters to choose from? Yep, oh, uh, multiple characters. Oh, that's gone. This really of. really hard like puzzle dungeon <laughs> game by it's one of the uh, uh, Zanadu games, I believe. Um, Whoa! Or no, no, it's a draw slay game. It's a Dragon Slayer family game. Um, the from Dragon Slayer family. So, okay, so like, like, so, oh, yeah. yeah, Nihon Falcom. I should, I should, there we go. Have <laughs> Dragon have. Slayer, Xanadu, like Fa yeah. and uh, Ease. Those all those games are connected. They're all cousins. Uh, yeah. Xanadu and Ease are connected. Yeah, 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 I didn't know that. That. yeah there's a whole chart. Oh I'll link God. you to the chart. Wow. Okay. Yeah, is and, the life uh, it's, tree and Ease. Uh, it's it's all tied together. Anyway, Dragon Slayer, which is Legacy of the Wizard, like Dragon Slayer Family, is one of those games. Mm-hmm. And okay. uh, wow. yeah, I, I I like Legacy. Anyway, Zelda at some point late in the second quest kind of turns into Legacy of the Wizard and you just get angry. Maybe Legacy of the Wizard will be on the NES Classic 2. So for, for my uh, Let's Playing, I'm going to read a poem for Jared. You yeah, have oh. a poem? Yeah, I brought a poem brought for Jared. Poem? Wow. Did you uh, write this poem? No, I didn't. Uh, okay. Bilbo Baggins wrote it. Okay. <laughs> it's a song sung by Bilbo Baggins after entrusting uh, his nephew Frodo Baggins mm. with the Ring of Power, which he just called his magic ring. Will you sing it, Sam? Uh, no, because I don't know how it's sung. Yeah. So okay. I'm going to read it as a poem. All right. Uh, the road goes ever on and on. Dawn, down from the door where it began. Now far ahead the road has gone, and I must follow if I can, pursuing it with eager feet until it joins some larger way. When many paths and errands meet, and whither then I cannot I'd say. say. Oh, I no. think that, that poem, that song does appear in the film. Mm-hmm. And they Gandalf attribute. sings it. Yeah. The road goes ever on and on. See, you had to read a good tune. Tolkien, man. Why did you do that? No. I didn't read it. Oh, <laughs> no, you read it, though. Thank you, Sam. Jared, it's I, been an honor and a pleasure. I have no words. I'm too busy crying now. Um, thank you, guys. Uh, Damon, you brought me in here to do this. Uh you don't need to, to be a, a part speech, of what man. you do here in Sam. I've heard a lot of these speeches. I love you, from you. You've heard a lot of this. Yeah, it's, it's, up, it's like Bilbo you... at his hundred weight feast. It <laughs> right. is, is exactly. one gross. Uh, actually, those were two separate events in the canon. Well, but, we uh, wish you the best of luck. Don't be a stranger. Okay. Nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and to all of our uh, listeners and viewers, thanks for hanging out with us with us all year long. We're going to take a couple weeks off to uh, celebrate the holidays with our families, play some video games, librations. Uh, but then we'll be back in the new year to talk about all the big games coming out in 2017. So Future Scoop. Please be excited for Game Scoop in 2017. <laughs> How could you not be? Uh, it's, it's, it's a good tough. question. It's yeah. tough. Battletoads. That's a wrap for us. Uh, thank you, Justin. Thank you, Jared. Thank you, Sam. My name is Damon. Thanks, this Damon. is IGN Game Scoop. Happy holidays, everybody. And we're out.